John McMullen here on a Monday. Hey, John, it's been forever. We haven't had you on since last Wednesday. How you doing, pal? I'm doing well. A little exciting day in South Philadelphia. A couple new players introduced. Yeah, so uh, we have plenty of ways that we could go. New faces arrive. We'll get into that. Faces are departing and where they end up. Faces released in Vinnie Curry. But I want to start with Carson Wentz because he put something up on Instagram that uh, should give Eagles fans some hope, right? Yeah, I mean, he's progressing. and, And obviously it's exciting to see him out there. Uh, throwing in the practice bubble uh, with his brace on. Remember, he's got a torn ACL, torn LCL, so that probably increases his rehab a little bit from doctors I've talked to from probably six months if it were just an ACL uh, to nine months because he tore both of those ligaments. And if you think about it, nine months, it's almost weird. Uh, December 10th was the day he was injured in los angeles you do the math nine months is september 10th which is four days after the thursday night opener uh, which is likely to be a rematch against the vikings in the nfc championship game uh so that's right about nine months four months four days before uh carson says he's going to be ready and uh, as you and mike know and josh is there as well uh, I, I don't have any doubt. I, I expect him to be there week one. Should he push himself? Is he too valuable to be pushing himself that hard and perhaps risking something uh, or, or further injury by pushing himself to be ready for that week one, especially with Nick Foles looking like he's going to stay around? No, I, I mean, yeah, you're not going to play him if he's not medically cleared. If he's medically cleared, you play him. I, I mean, it's as simple as that. It's that. It's not a football decision. It's a medical decision. So from the coach's standpoint, from Doug Peterson to Mike Rowe, the new offensive coordinator, uh, they just look towards the doctors. If he's ready to play, he plays. If he isn't, he doesn't. Uh, It's as simple as that. Anybody thinking there's a quarterback controversy because of the way Nick Poles played in the championship game and the Super Bowl, it's just not the case. This is Carson Wentz's team. When he's medically cleared, he will be in the lineup. If he does come back in week one, uh, the doctor you talked to thought that he'd probably still have a brace on? Yeah, I mean, that's typical. Even if he had just a torn ACL, you're probably going to use the brace. Uh, The the doctor I spoke to said for at least a year, uh, certainly with an ACL and an LCL. So uh, that's going to be part of his uh, uh, equipment and added piece for a, a pretty lengthy time and that's at least going to change his game somewhat I would imagine uh, and and that's something you do have to keep an eye on because one of the strengths of his game is mobility uh, and you would think with a brace on that's going to hamper that at least some. Yeah you think back to that play against the Redskins and his escapability and you just wonder if the brace is going to be an issue and his mobility be an issue moving forward because there always seems to be a little bit of a lingering. You know, yeah, the guy comes back, but he's never quite the same in those first couple weeks, right? Yeah, usually it does take a while. It really does. And and from most doctors I've spoken to, and and more than one, it's more of a mental hurdle than a physical hurdle uh, because, as I said, in a lot of cases, Doctors will say the ligament's actually stronger than it was before the surgery. They've made such advancements. But it is a mental hurdle. It's a very painful rehab. Uh, and, and no matter how good you are, no matter how good of an athlete you are, if you go through that sort of in the back of your mind. So I, I think it's more of a mental thing than anything else. John, the Eagles introduced Michael Bennett and Daryl Worley today. You were there in the house, and man, did Michael Bennett have a lot to say from about how he's looking for a new Lombardi trophy, how he's going to be hunting Eli Manning and Dak Prescott and Alex Smith, to how he just wants to focus on fitting in. So what were some of your impressions about Michael Bennett today? Well, I know he has a reputation of being an outspoken guy, but I got to tell you, he was he was tremendous uh, today. Uh, he was very engaging, handled himself very well, certainly didn't make me uncomfortable in the slightest. Pete will get that joke. Uh, 
he, he's a good guy. He really is. And obviously he's a proven football player. Uh, he's already won a Super Bowl. He's a yard away from winning the second Super Bowl. And, and now he's got a chance on this team to win a third. Uh, he, he understands leadership. He was a leader in that Seattle locker room. I expect him uh, to be a leader pretty quickly in the Eagles locker room. That's just his personality. And one of the things I like about him a lot, I asked him about, because he mentioned leadership, and that he's one of those guys who actually goes out of his way to help younger players because early in his career, when he was in Tampa, people like Warren Sapp did that for him. So he's one of those pay-it-forward guys. And that, to me, is a big thing because he's going to be trying to teach somebody like Derek Barnett uh, everything he knows, and that's that's a lot. So that that could be very helpful uh, to the Eagles in two ways. He's still a really good player, and he wants to help others. Yeah, you mentioned at the press conference today that uh, he had heard that Derek Barnett, he looked up to Michael Bennett when he was playing, and his reaction was, am I really that old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, because when Derek got drafted, he, 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 you always get that question, uh, who do you kind of uh, have looked at, who do you pattern your game after? And Derek mentioned Michael Bennett as one of the names. Uh, yeah, and he made a little joke about it, and I think we've all had that sort of moment in our lives when uh, you start getting old. Well, maybe not you, Josh, but certainly Pete and I. Uh, you start getting older, and you don't realize it until a really young person comes around. And I think uh, Michael had that moment, but uh, he's still. I, I think he's still got a lot of gas left in the tank. Speaking of gas the tank, he mentioned about he's comfortable taking snaps off, and I, I don't. I don't understand why people were so high on that because when the Seahawks were winning the Super Bowl and got back to the Super Bowl, him and Cliff Abel actually only played between, you know, 54 and 64 snaps per season. So he has a history of being used to being part of a rotation. Last year was kind of the exception, not the rule for his career. Right, John? Yeah, and I think people did look back only to last year uh, where he did have to play more snaps than usual. Uh, and that was because they weren't as deep as they typically were in years past. Uh, and he did it, and he played through injury as well to do it. So I consider that a positive. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's certainly an advantage for him coming up to the latter stages of his career to get that work scale back, and the Eagles have the depth to do it. Uh, I mean, they're – arguably have the best defensive line in football last year. And I think, if anything, at least on paper, uh, it's even better because Michael's better than Vinny Curry and Elodie Nada uh, is it, better than Bo Allen, even though they're older players. Speaking of players, John, now that Bennett is here, he gets introduced on Monday, and it was just over the weekend that the Eagles let go of Vinny Curry. Obviously, he didn't last too long on the free agent market. Before we get to Curry specifically, so without him on the team, how do you foresee Bennett fitting into the rotation? Well, I think he fits right into Benny Curry's role now, uh, and that'll be the starting right defensive end. Uh, the interesting part to me is how are they going to rotate on, on uh, in the nickel package, what they called their NASCAR package of pass rushers. Last year was Brandon Graham would move inside, and they would bring Chris Long in to play left end, would bring Derek Barnett in to play right end uh, to replace Vinny. Uh, they have an embarrassment of riches because Michael Bennett is sort of the same player or same type of player as Brandon Graham in that he has always moved inside in the nickel pass rush in the interior. He's very good at it. Arguably, he's better at it than Brandon. So they could move either inside. And it's interesting. I, I think we have to look at how this affects Chris Long and Derek Barnett. Will they both be on the field uh, on third downs in obvious passing situations? Because you kind of want Bennett out there. You kind of want Graham out there. And you definitely want Fletcher Cox out there. So that means only Derek or Chris Long could be out there. And, John, with Vinny Curry being gone, he obviously got a job pretty quick with the Bucks, which is a little ironic because that 11.5 injury guarantee on his contract is almost equal to what the Eagles were going to pay him. 
this year for his contract. He does count as a dead salary cap hit. So in the grand scheme of things, do you think moving on from Curry is going to be worth it? Well, I, I mean, the Eagles, number one, uh, they got better at the position. As I said, Michael Bennett is, is a better player uh, at a lesser cap uh, rate than Vinny would have been. Uh, even though he's a little bit older, at least for the short term, they're better. But Vinny's already admitted uh, the Eagles offered him an opportunity to come back. He would have had to take a pay cut to stay here, uh, but he knew – If he got to the open market, and we've talked about it on this show, he's very valuable on the open market uh, because teams, a lot of teams are looking for a pass rush. He's not great, but he's good. Uh, And you saw he didn't last 24 hours, and and he got a a decent contract. So that tells you his value around the league. The problem with the Eagles trying to trade him is the contract. You don't want to trade an asset and also paying significant money, and that's why they were forced to release him in the end. John, I understand that he's able to give more money on the free agent market, but you look at a guy like Lane Johnson, a guy like Zach Ertz, they were willing to renegotiate their deals. Was the pay cut really that extreme, especially considering that, you know, if you're having an honest conversation with Vinny, whether it's Howie Roseman or his agent or anybody, isn't there a part of the conversation saying, Vinny, you do know that you were arguably the third best defensive end on this team last year. Well, you could argue he's the fourth best, to be honest. Chris Long played very well. Derek played very well. But he played very well. It depends what you want to look at. As a pass rusher, uh, somebody like Chris Long was more productive in, in a fewer amount of snaps. And obviously Derek Barnett. Uh, is a very young player, first-round pick. So uh, that's not going to be an issue uh, as far as, you know, moving forward. Derek Barton, that's part of the future. Vinny's sort of a, a, a fringe player. So from his perspective, look, it's not about going to him and saying, we don't have the exact numbers, but I'm guessing the Eagles expected him to take at least a 50% pay cut. He and his agent knew if he was on the open market uh, with without that big contract, without being saddled with it, without teams having to give up uh, draft picks to get him, he would get significant money. Turns out they were right. John McBullen with us here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Well, John, Michael Bennett, not the only face at the NovaCare Complex this morning. The new corner is in town. He's a Philly native. That's Daryl Worley. What did he have to say to the media? And what stood out to you? Well, uh, Daryl, obviously, is it's going to be interesting to see where he fits in. And I think as a whole, how this cornerback pie sort of splits itself uh, without Patrick Robinson, who was the obvious nickelback and really the only one of the guys who are here. Uh, he obviously signed with the Saints. Uh, that projects well into the slot. Every corner the Eagles have now. They have a lot of talent, a lot of depth, and Jalen Mills, Ronald Darby, Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas, and now you add Daryl Worley to that mix, but they're all outside corners. So one of the first questions we asked him uh, is, do you have the ability to play in the slot? Of course, he was going to say yes. Uh, The reality is he's never done it. Uh, he's a big corner. He doesn't project well in there. Uh, and it's going to be interesting as this moves forward who the Eagles move to the slot without Patrick Robinson because the answer is not obvious. Uh, I mean, it's obvious who's not moving, and that's Sidney Jones, that's Ronald Darby, that's Rasul Douglas. So really it knocks down the Jalen Mills or Daryl Worley. And, it, and if that does break as I expect it to, I think Jalen Mills is going to be the new slot corner. So Daryl Worley uh, comes back to town. Jalen Mills, you project. Uh, of course, that's just looking ahead. Uh, what what else did uh, Worley have to say about coming back here? Does he think he has gas left in the tank? I mean, he says all the right things, I'm sure. What were some of the questions that uh, were asked of him, and what were some of his answers? Well, he's he's still a very, very young player, so he's, <laughs> he's got gas in the tank. But uh, he's obviously a Philadelphia native. 
Uh, went to Penn Charter. He's very excited to be back. His family still lives in the city. Uh, so it's like a dream come true for him to be traded to the Eagles. Very excited by that. He's also a West Virginia product. It's a shame uh, Mike is not there today because uh, there's a lot of West Virginia players on this team, and and uh, Daryl knows them all. So that makes things a little bit easier as far as moving to a new place, even though he, he, under, he knows Philadelphia. The locker room, the players are all new to him. Uh, but he's got all those those teammates that used to be at West Virginia with him, so that that helps him with the transition a little bit. Call it WVU North. Uh, so six players from that 2017 roster have signed elsewhere. Nine are still on the open market. The one guy we haven't talked about was LeGarrette Blunt. Detroit is his landing spot. What did you think of the deal that LeGarrette Blunt got? Well, I think it's interesting because if you look at LeGarrett Blount coming off Super Bowl 51, which the Patriots obviously won, uh, and he was a big part of that team, even though he, he fumbled in the Super Bowl. Uh, but he had 18 touchdowns that year. And, you know, he, he wasn't able to sign until May, and he only got $1.25 million, uh from the Eagles. Uh, sort of a, a one-year prove-it deal. Uh, he played very well with the Eagles, obviously not that kind of productivity, but he was their leading rusher, uh, had a very good Super Bowl, and this time he gets signed in the early days of free agency, and he gets a raise. So it's never easy for running backs uh, over 30 to get paid. That's just not the way that the NFL works. But, I, I mean, LeGarrette Blount just keeps playing and playing well and winning Super Bowls. I don't think he's going three for three and back-to-back-to-back cities because I don't think Detroit is ready. But I'll tell you what, he, he gives them a, a legitimate first and second down running threat, and that's something they haven't had in years. And if you give Matthew Stafford a, an actual running game, the lines are going to be difficult to stop. And Legarrette Blunt was a pretty good locker room influence, wouldn't you agree? And, and he never raised a, he never uh, raised a stink when uh, Jay Ajayi came onto the team. He just always played his role. Yeah, and that was a concern. He had a, a bit of a reputation coming here because the thought was that New England was the only place that could control him. Uh, previous stops in Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay. Uh, there were some com- complaints about him as a, a, a guy, him in the locker room, but he was tremendous the entire season. Even after, as you mentioned, the Eagles traded uh, for Jay Ajahi at the deadline, which was a, a clear indication that he was going to be their, their starting running back of the future. Uh, never once uh, wavered, uh, just was knew there was something special going on, wanted to win another Super Bowl. Uh, he was a big part of it. Uh, as I said, he got back to back, and now he can go to another team where he's going to be the guy, probably at least early on. Uh, and and it, it's part of that Super Bowl attrition we've talked about since the Eagles won it. They were going to lose some good players, and Legarrette's one of them. Yeah, six guys have left, nine still out there on the market: Brent Selleck, Darren Sproles, Corey Graham, Najee Good, Kenyon Barner, Ellerby, Brayman, Will Beatty. <laughs> And Jalen Watkins. Uh, Watkins is an interesting one as you sit there. If nobody else is out there that uh, offers him a deal, maybe there's a team-friendly option for Watkins. It's possible. Uh, that'd be something, you know, if you think about what they did with Corey Graham, uh, who's an older player, uh, and he'll be contemplating retirement. He could possibly walk away. But the Eagles signed him in August, and he beca- became a, a very, very – important part of that defense is the third safety. Uh, they need to fill that role. Uh, I could see them trying to do it in the draft uh, and and then sort of going to camp and, and seeing if, if maybe a rookie can do it. And if not, they might, might call Corey again. Uh, or they might call Jalen if he's still on the street. Uh, he was a restricted free agent, remember, and the Eagles didn't tender him. Uh, which makes him unrestricted, and he can sign anywhere. But they've at least indicated there's some interest in bringing him, bringing him back, but they're 
they're obviously trying to save a dollar or two by not giving in the tender. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, Eagles and NFL Insider. John, a couple NFL news and notes from the weekend. This is the last time we talked to you. Uh, the Jets give up a haul to the Colts to get up to third overall. Uh, obviously, a great move for the Colts and Chris Ballard to get such a nice high price for the third overall pick. And for the Jets, it seems like this concept of over-investing in the quarterback position, people called it that when the Eagles had Wentz and Bradford and Daniel on the roster a couple of years ago. And now you're going to have the Jets. They have Josh McCowan, Teddy Bridgewater, a couple of quarterbacks who haven't worked out in Hackenberg and Petty. And then they might be drafting a quarterback as well. So are, are the Jets just trying to throw as many darts at the board until one of them lands? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I think they still have Joel Stave, the ex-Wisconsin quarterback. Oh, so they, man. They, they can have, uh, yeah, they can have a, a big quarterback party. Uh, and, yeah, they're going to pick a quarterback. I mean, that's why they went up to that position and got it. And you're right about Chris Ballard. I mean, Indianapolis thinks Andrew Luck is healthy and is going to be able to play. And if that's the case, he's one of the better quarterbacks in football. So you don't need that position. Uh, so from their standpoint, it's good. But I, I got to tell you, if the Jets finally get it right, whoever it might be, if it's Josh Allen, if it's Baker Mayfield, whoever they like and select at that number three spot, if they ultimately become a franchise quarterback, it doesn't matter what they gave up. And it's everybody's going to forget about it. Perfect examples here in Philadelphia. The Eagles gave up a ton to get Carson Wentz. Nobody talks about it. Why? Because he's a superstar. Uh, and if you can lock down that position – doesn't matter how much you get up. So I, I applaud the Jets for finally trying to address this, finally admitting Christian Hackenberg was a mistake and, and trying to go up and, and, and get the quarterback. Now they got to evaluate correctly and, and get the right guy. John, what about the path that the Jets are taking versus the path, the, the conservative path the Bills are taking? Because a lot of people think the Bills – are going to move up to try and get a guy, but the Jets take that first step. Well, I don't think necessarily Buffalo's going the conservative route. I think they're going the Howie Roseman route because they were lower, 21 and 22, so they have to do it in increments. Remember, when the Eagles got Wentz, they had to trade up twice, first with Miami uh, and then all the way up to number two. Uh, and, and the Bills have mer made the first trade, and now they got to see if they can move up even further. Some people have talked about the Giants moving back from number two. Ultimately, I think the Giants are smart enough to realize they need a quarterback as well. Uh, I think they'll stay put. So uh, Buffalo could be out of luck unless they try to get up to that number four spot uh, and get the last of the quarterbacks. It's conceivable we go quarterback, 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 quarterback at the top of this draft. Yeah, that would just be insane. It would be like 2011 all over again. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, John, and Dominican Sue is supposed to be visiting with the Rams next, even though the Rams just re-signed uh, uh, Dom Easley. So could we see a situation where we see Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue next to each other on a D-line next year? It's possible. Uh, I mean, he's visiting, and he's been touring basically the country, and Dominican's one of those guys who's it's pretty evident he's going to go for the biggest paycheck. He's used to making a lot of money. He expects to make a lot of money. I don't know. I, I tweeted earlier. I, I, it doesn't seem like a fit for me. Uh, Wade Phillips plays obviously a 3-4. He's always been about, you know, getting five techniques so the edge rushers, uh, can make plays. And yeah, and Dominican Sue could probably play the five technique really, really well, but it seems like a waste of his talent. I, I, I don't know why he would want to do that. I don't know why the Rams would want to do that. And, and they've already kind of tweaked themselves because Aaron Donald is so good. And they use him a little bit differently than they would typically use their defensive linemen, and good for them because it would stu be stupid not to. I, I just don't think he's a fit for that defense. 
John McMullen with us, our 97.3 ESPN Eagles insider and also national football columnist for us as well. And, John, uh, so Michael Bennett today, Daryl Worley today, anything else in the hopper Eagles-wise uh, on the horizon in the next day or two? Uh, no, but, you know, with this team, there's always something right around the corner. So just when you say no, they'll bring somebody else in. And, and But from this point, I, I think it's going to be sort of the lower profile moves that define their season last year. You remember in this second wave of free agency, this is where they signed Chris Long and Patrick Robinson. Uh, in May, as I mentioned, that's when they signed LeGarrette Blunt. And, and you have to go all the way to August when they brought in Corey Grant. So you'll see moves like that from this point forward. But I, I don't think there's going to be a splashy move. But just when you say that with Howie Roseman, he'll probably trade uh, Brandon Grant. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, you know, people will say I said that. Probably, you said. You didn't say he will. You just said he might. John no, McMullen was. It, it, that was, Obviously, the sarcasm doesn't come across on, on the airwaves. Come planted firmly in cheek. Follow him on Twitter, at JF McMullen. He's with us every day at this time here on the Sports Bash. Thank you, Johnny Mac. We'll talk to you again tomorrow, buddy. Hey, thanks, guys.